Hello and welcome to Kotocat Mets. The Mets finishing their series with the Brewers. And in games two and three, we're going to see how big a part defense plays in winning baseball. And nothing symbolizes this better than two Lorenzo Cain at-bats, each ball hit to Francisco Lindor. Here he is in the second game of the series. Score is 4-1, to one, bases juice, fifth inning. This is a huge out to keep the game reachable and Lindor can't do it. He's trying to shovel the ball from Glove to McNeil, directly get the force out, get out of the inning, keep the lead only three, and maybe the Mets can hit back. But the ball's hit, Read the pitcher, in the foot. There's a lot of spin on the ball, and when Lindor goes to get it out of his glove on the flip, it's got to be quick. It had to be a quick play. The runner's coming. It just doesn't work out. But you can see there was time if he had been able to flip it cleanly, which, quite frankly, most MLB shortstops make this play 90 out of 100 times, 90% of the time. I mean, what's the fielding percentage? I mean, we need Lindor. Buck, not happy. So cut to what happens after that. The Brewers then go off. After this play, the floodgates open, and we're going to watch it in fast motion because it is horrible to see. The Brewers produce seven runs in the inning, and they put the game out of reach. Game over. So now we fast forward to the rubber game of the series. The Mets and Brewers tied at one game each. It's 4-1. to one. Lorenzo Cain hits one in the hole, and Lindor fields it cleanly and throws a rocket across the diamond to get a very fast runner. Keeps the game 4-1. to one. And the Mets hit back. They tie the game with Mark Canna going oppo, and he gets a large part of this ball. Big contact, goes the other way. Canna's just been an incredible pickup. This guy hits the ball where the defense isn't. He makes long at-bats, makes pitchers work, lets everybody on the team see the pitcher. And when he gets a ball to drive, he's not missing those. And he took that one oppo. To tie it, Telez will make an error, and the Mets will take the lead on an unearned run. And in the ninth inning, their defense comes into play again. Plummer racing to the side to get the ball off the wall. He one-hops Alonzo. Alonzo cannot believe that Hunter Renfro is being waved home. Renfro tagged right in the jaw, meat at the dish. And we got a lot going on here. First of all, horrible play by the third base coach. The Mets announcers were all over him. You would have the tying run at third with less than two out. You got to hold him there. Secondly, Renfro has been throwing people out his whole career. The man has a cannon, and he's thrown two Mets out in this series. And ironically, he's the one thrown out at the plate. And finally, as my friend James let me know, this is like the Duda redo. If you remember, Lucas Duda... He really has Eric Hosmer at the plate in the World Series by 10 feet if he makes a throw like that, but he never did. So it's like Alonzo rectifying the past with a cannon throw. It's not low, but it gets there in time and take one on the jaw. Boom. I don't like Nito being so concerned about Renfro that he's got to run over and say, are you okay? Hey, call timeout first, all right? And Diaz then is visited by Buck Showalter for like a three-second visit. And Diaz says, I want Yelich. No, I'm not walking him. And three pitches later, the Mets are high-fiving Diaz and walking off the field. That was awesome. Buck gave him the choice. He chose Yelich, and he strikes out the former MVP. The Mets take two out of three. They're now 19-4 and four after a loss. And really, the Braves are coming. 14 in a row, but the Mets keep winning. This has been Kodo Cat Mets. If you like this video and you love the Mets, please subscribe.